All right, we've had extensive debate, and uh, is there anyone else who have not spoken, wish to... Marcus, I've been waiting for you. Can I have a short recess, All Mr. right, Speaker? come on. Up there. Okay. Representative. Okay, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, I've been uh, sitting here for several hours now, listening to my colleagues. And in some respect, I appreciate their comments because I believe that they have been listening to the conversations of the last several weeks to each other, most, most importantly to the people. So I appreciate that. But I still can't shake it from me, and I still will leave this special session whenever it ends with a terrible and nasty and bad taste in my mouth, as if someone had shoved something vile and putrid and rotten down my throat. And I think I speak for many out there who have come to the belief this dog and pony show is one in its way to its final terrible conclusion. So let me try this one more time, Mr. Speaker. Now that the governor has called us into special session, like prior governors, it is the legislative branch it is the legislative branch that controls our own destiny. We do not have to move upon this bill. It is our responsibility. It is our decision. And upon that, individually and collectively, will history judge us, Mr. Speaker. So I would like to uh, remind my colleagues on the other chamber that they will have an opportunity to review the record that we have produced for them over the last 50 some odd hours or five days of public hearing and testimony to maybe correct the errors of their ways on their first initial hearing, that they might reconsider their prior decision on passing the bill out unamended and learn from us in the House of Representatives. So there's still time, Mr. Speaker. There's still time. It goes back to what I've been telling the people over the last five, six weeks. What is the rush? What is the rush to do what is right? To do what is pono for all people? My friends in the gay community, my friends in the straight community, my friends in the religious community, my friends in the irreligious community. What's the rush? There is no rush, Mr. Speaker. Let me talk a little bit about this bill and the grave concerns I have. You know, one of the things I told people on the road is this, a fear that I have, a grave fear that I have, is that if any of these provisions are struck down and found un unconstitutional and is challenged in court, it is the governor who can choose not to defend the law. And this governor has chosen not to defend the law regarding the marriage statute on the books today. That was approved by some of my colleagues back in 1994. He has chosen not to. And for me, as a legislator, Mr. Speaker, I have grave fears that anything in this measure here that does not comport to the Constitution may not be defended by our governor. And that's why I've been speaking up repeatedly over and over and over again and begging the indulgence of my colleagues and you, Mr. Speaker, to fix this bill. We still have time to fix this bill. There is no need to rush. There is no need to rush. If we don't do this right, Mr. Speaker, how are we going to begin to heal our community? That's a decision we have to make, and that's why we are here today. 
Mr. Speaker, if I've had this poster on my door for several weeks now. Conflicts between same-sex marriage and religious conscience are reasonably foreseeable and for that very reason are unnecessary when a prudent legislature acts decisively to protect complementary human values, liberty, and equity by adopting language that enables Mr. both Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I yield my time. Sure. Order. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. By adopting language that enables both interests to be protected realistically, without such legislative safeguards, many religious individuals will be forced to engage in conduct that violates their deepest religious beliefs. And religious organizations will be forced to engage in conduct. They will be constrained in crucial aspects of their exercise of their religion. Hence, the legislature should take care to ensure that the legalization of same-sex marriage does not restrict the inalienable right of religious liberty. This is entirely consistent, Mr. Speaker, with the Hawaii State Constitution that each member of the state legislature has sworn to uphold and protect since its adoption in 1950 and ratification in 1959, the Hawaii Constitution has always protected religious freedom in the strongest terms. I've been citing and quoting to a lot of the legal experts who have spent their careers and lives on this issue. And I'll give a shout out right now to a Mr. Professor Laycock, who just as recently as two days ago communicated to me via email on a comment I had regarding the proposed language here in Connecticut his response to me was that this language is really inadequate, insufficient, what we're trying to do, and may lead to further troubles. But what I found really intriguing to me, as I reflected upon what he was doing, that even before he was going to make his oral argument on behalf of the City of Greece case before the United States Supreme Court, he felt this issue for Hawaii was worthy enough to spend some time to get back to me, a nobody, to share his comment. He had his argument the other day. He's representing, Mr. Speaker, just so you know who this man is, an atheist who does not believe in any religion before the highest court in the land to defend our rights to be free from religion and to practice religion. The law state can be welcoming both to same-sex couples and to citizens of your state who object to providing goods and service to these couples, not because they are gays, but because of the religious basis for their understanding of marriage. Such persons reach the decision in good conscience for a positive reason, not a negative one. They view marriage as a religious institution and the wedding ceremony as a religious sacrament. Finally, this is the concern. Once the bill is passed, those opposed to any exception for religious communities will give the narrowest possible interpretation to all exceptions. For this reason, Mr. Speaker, the legislature ought to take enough time to write legislation consonant with President Obama's sage counsel. On an issue as sensitive as this, knowing that Americans hold a wide range of views based on deeply held beliefs, maintaining our nation's commitment to religious freedom is also vital. Mr. Speaker, without adequate safeguards for religious liberty of the sort proposed, the recognition of same-sex marriage will lead to socially divisive and entirely unnecessary conflicts between the exercise of rights pursuant to the same-sex marriage law and religious liberty. This is a destructive path leading to needless loss by both sides. 
A balanced middle way leads to a win-win solution for both sides. The Hawaii State Legislature should avoid both extremes and be wise peacemakers. May I have permission, Mr. Speaker, to submit further written comments? So ordered, Representative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Rep Representative Evans.